Michael liked to go get the original sounds uh, as much as he could. Like he liked that. That I worked for Michael for about six months creating sounds. He had just wanted. He called me up and said, "Can you come to the studio?" And I said, "Sure." And I was nervous, but met him, and he, he goes, "I like you to make sounds for me." I said, "Okay, what kind of sounds? Anything unusual? Well, like bass sounds, guitar sounds, drum sounds, anything unusual." <laughs> so I would just go up to his house two, three times a week, and just sit at the Saint Clavier. And he had just, one there. Yeah, he had a Saint Clavier at his house. Um, he so was. This is it, after Thriller. This is yeah, after. This is, is this is bad. Prior or? prior to the Bad album, so okay. pre-production for Bad. So. I created a bunch of sounds, like just probably a hundred, couple, two, three hundred sounds. Wow. And he liked a lot of it. And he, he would come into the studio and listen. I'd create a little sequences with the Sinclair sequencer. And he came in and listened. And he's, one time I was playing a little groove and he said, you really like music, don't you? <laughs> I said, yes, I do. Yeah, kind of. And he said, okay. One of the sounds that he did like a lot was this this bass sound, and, and, and John Barnes used it uh, when they were cre uh, writing Smooth Criminal. I didn't know what the song was at the time. I had no idea. I just heard the groove, and I go, oh, mm -hmm. that's cool. Later, Michael wanted me to recreate the sound. I he says, did, did you record that, that sample? And I said, no, I got it for somebody else, and I created the, the sound from that. And he said, would you come to the studio and recreate that? I want an original, a real hi-fi sound of that. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. So I learned, knew the technique of how to create that sound. I won't give it away. It's a kind of a secret. But, <laughs> but is I'll it show a you. sample? Yeah, it's a sample. I'll show you. Uh, here we go. So here's, a, it was called a muted, mute, muted piano. So there's the sound. Great sound. So Very yeah, it's like a, a grand piano. But when you take that sample, Raise it up. Now you got a musical tone. You can hear it better. Sure. That's not the low A anymore on the piano. It's a so that's the sound from Smooth Criminal. But he, when he recorded it, he they also they added. I think it was a mini mode. So they added. Let's hear it. Oh uh, yeah. So together. So that's basically the sound. So you get. It's the Sinclair partial, you know, right. timbre system, allowing you to do multiple timbre sounds, two right. sounds at once. That's only two. That's only two partials. It's a stereo sample. It takes up two voices, and then you have a, a monophonic sample of a mini Moog. A mini Moog sample. And those samples were, I think, I sampled George Duke's mini Moog. He brought it to the studio once, and we were we just went through a sampling session. And that's the sample from that. This was, I don't know if that was the one they actually used, but okay. it was part of the Sinclair Library and stuff. Yeah. I ought to call up that. <laughs> I tried to recreate the Smooth Criminal so you could hear all the sounds that were going on in the song. I didn't create all of these sounds, but it's pretty close. There it is. Yep. With the 80s snare. So that's, you got the basic sound track one. Whoa, 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 one second. The Synclavier has something very interesting, a sequencer. That's right. So this isn't MIDI. Right. This Just is explain not MIDI. that first. Yeah, it's the Synclavier sequencer is, started off as a 16 track sequencer. Actually, Cameron told me that the Synclavier one was only like eight tracks. Cameron's one of the inventors right. of the, so he's the software inventor and Sid Alonzo was the hardware inventor. Uh, so when they created this keyboard, they expanded it out to 32 buttons, but you can also get, it, assign them up to 200. So you can have 200 tracks. So it's like a, a workspace. So as, you're, as you create your sounds and you store, store that, they call it a, a recorder, a real-time recorder, mm -hmm. uh, sequencer, you store that, it stores all the timbres that you've designed and put in there. When you call up that button, you call up the button or a named file, it calls up that entire thing, all the sounds, just gathers them all together. Yep, and puts them in there. And, and right now, what is this? The, uh, the mini Moog sound soloed. So whatever sound is on track one, you can grab. Whatever sound is on track two, it's as quick it's fire, as that. It's a fire extinguisher. Whatever sound is on track three, 
Looks like your drum kit. That's the kick drum for that. The four. The gated snare. I don't remember which pitch. Yeah. That sounds like it. Okay, so back to the sequencer. Oh, well, actually, track five, I think, was actually an FM. The harmony. Yeah, that's just, just an FM only sound. But you could mix. Mix your FM sound with, what well, if you like that sound? And you say, well, what about the, you can select a partial. Say, I want to get the, I want to get the mini Moog, which was on partial two of that other sound. I can select just that partial. Now I got the FM. Oh, without the piano. Yeah. Very quick. Yeah. Well, let's, so yeah. go ahead with the sequencer, like layer in the, uh, the sounds one at a time. You can see how it works. So I got Cause you can solo tracks, just like on a multi-track recorder. Kick drum. Snare. <laughs> Real time transposition. cool things that the sync liver can do is it samples itself so when you create a sound you want to modify it let's say you pick up a let's say we create a new snare sound for the smooth criminal <laughs> want to change the tuning maybe add, add the kick drum to it oh, that's not what I want. oh kick snare kick is here <laughs> No, three. Oops. So he's changing just one of the partials. Okay. Let's gate it. So now there's a kick and a snare. That's pretty good. I mean, so you could just use it as is, right. or you can create a whole new sample. So I'll go over here to the sampling page. I will sample it in stereo, set our levels. Stereo sampling. Yeah, and just wait, do it from just here. Just play it. So, there we go. Now you can see the waveform on the screen. He's going to put a new start on there. And it's that fast on the keyboard. And now you can put it in the sequence, right? Yeah, let's take that snare drum, which was here. That's our new snare Now it's drum. lower with a kick in. Well, we want to put a flanger on it. So we just chorused it, which means making a copy of the sound and then detuning it. And it's that fast. You could actually sample the whole sequence. Let's say, well, let's, say, let's change the pitch of the entire sequence. You can actually sample that whole track. I'll just send it over there. Check the levels. Here. What if, so you can sample it in real time. What if I wanted to sample just like, do that. Watch. Okay, let's, yeah. Yeah, you can yeah. do that. And then speed it up. <laughs> yep. And we'll play that back, just like it has. <laughs> Sounds like it's an octave lower. Oh, because we changed the tuning here, I yeah. think. Overall tuning. Yeah. Is it polyphonic? Yep. Is it polyphonic? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, so you can... What about just chorus? <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't sound so awesome. Endless possibilities, though, with this thing, and super fast. I don't think anyone realizes, like, an uh, instrument that came from way back then, you know, that it was really a real-time... It was partially designed to be a real-time performance instrument.